Hi everyone, I'm going to talk you through how to create a Google Form. So, as usual, you start from the Google Drive page and you go to Create Form. Now, in my job, we use the Google Forms quite extensively for pretty much all data gathering exercises. So, module evaluations, student elections for kind of SAF student committees, and we also use it for registering interest in conferences and any other data gathering exercises you can think of. So the first thing you do when you come to your form is if you go to the theme, you can choose from quite a wide range of different themes for your form to look like. Personally, I don't like any of them. They're all a bit amateurish and a bit childish. But if you click on one, it will display roughly how it will when it's live. So I don't particularly like any of them. I usually just stick to the plain theme, which is there by default. So if I go back to editing and give my form a name and give it a description, so why are you filling this form in? Well, this is a test. And with Google, you always start with two default questions, sample question one, sample question two. You can reorder things by hovering over it so it turns yellow, clicking and dragging. So I'm now going to edit question two. And I'm going to ask my first question and I'm going to go for, do you like iron brew? And the question can be text, so they get a small text box to answer in. Paragraph text, which is your longer extended qualitative answers, multiple choice, check boxes, choose from a list, scale questions, or a grid. So for now I'm just going to stick to multiple choice and the answer is yes or no. And now you can add more boxes by either tabbing down, pressing down on the keyboard, or clicking. So you can add more than just the two standard options and if you don't want them you can click the X here to delete them. So you can make the question required but I don't want it to be so I'm going to click done. Now this question here I've decided I don't want it so I'm just going to delete it. Now one of the many advantages of a Google form is you're not limited to the amount of questions that you can ask and you're not limited to the amount of responses. So SurveyMonkey will limit you to 10 questions unless you pay for it and things like Paul Daddy limit you to 200 responses. So if, if you're a student that's probably more than enough but when you're doing it for, across a department you're probably going to need to request re get more than 200 responses. You can also have branching questions within Google Forms. So to have a branching question, you have to have a yes, no answer. It can't be a checkbox. So I'm just going to create another multiple choice question. And I'm going to ask, what day is it today? Is it Thursday? Or is it Friday? And obviously you could add Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Because it's a branching question, I need this to be a required question. So I'm just going to make it required. And if you see here, go to page based on answer. If you click on it, it'll tell you you don't have any page breaks. You need to create these first. So what you do here is if you click done and go to add item and add a page break, the page title I'm going to create is just for demonstrative purposes. I'm just going to call it Thursday give it a description, click done, and then within Thursday I'm going to add another question, this time it can be a paragraph text, why do you like Thursday, well I don't know but it's just a question, it doesn't need to be required and I'm going to click done. So if I go to edit I can now make it go to a question based on my answers. So for Thursday, I want it to go 
to further day as I spelt it wrong. And now you can see Friday will want to go to the next page. So because the next page is actually page two, which is further day, I now need to create another page, which is either going to be question specific to Friday, like for Thursday, or it can be the end of the quiz. And just because it's a quick test, I'm going to do it for the end. So if I go and create another one, call it end of test, give it a description, click done. Because I don't like having to keep saying Thursday day, I'm just going to correct that. So now if I go to what day is it today, click the edit, the Friday answer can go to end of test. Thursday will default to the next page anyway, but it's best to actually tell it specifically to go to page three or the end of the test. Now on end of the test, you want to leave it on go to next page, because as the last page, it will always default to the submit button. One thing to be aware of, if you've got multiple pages, you need to structure it quite well. Otherwise you end up creating loops and you actually can't complete the test. It took me a while to figure this out, but you need to kind of layer things as you're going along. So if I click save and say I've finished my test and close it, you can see here in my Google Drive folder, I've got my test form. If I click on it, here's the spreadsheet of where the answers are going to go. If I click on form and go to live form, here's my test. Do I like Iron Brew? Yes, I do. What day is it today? Today is Thursday. Continue. And you can see it's gone to the Thursday page. So I type in my answer, click continue and it's the end of the test. So I'll submit that. And as you can see, it's filled in the spreadsheet for me automatically. If I just go to the live form again, just to demonstrate it, do I like Iron Brew? No. What day is it? It's Friday. Continue. And it's the end of the test. So you'll see different columns are not filled in based on the answers. And you'll see here, I've got this rogue question one, and that's because if you create a question, or don't, in this case of not editing sample question one, it will always stay in the spreadsheet. So if I'd created another question and then deleted it, it will actually appear here. Google's not very good at getting rid of it, and it's not immediately obvious how to delete this column. You would think it's here, but it's not. You actually have to go to edit, delete column. You can, if you reorder your questions, you need to reorder it in the spreadsheet as well. So if I, because I had actually moved C to question one, in theory, I need to move it left one. But actually in this case, I don't need to because I deleted question one. So if I go to click on that question, go to edit and go to delete. Now, the things, what you'll need to do now is actually send this quiz to people. So if you click on form, go to live form, this is the link that you want to send to people. So I just copy that link and go into incognito mode. If I type that link, it should ask me to log into the university, which it does, because when I go to edit form, I've required it to sign in to the University of Sheffield. So if I untick that and save it, and now go back into incognito, I can now fill in the form as a random person, not within the University of Sheffield. So there you go, you can see it's automatically filled it in. So if you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me. My details are on the page before.